Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is Straight Out of Boston here, and today I'm back with episode number 17 of my Brooklyn Nets My League series here on NBA 2K16. So we're getting ready to kick off the 2017 offseason with the draft lottery, and amazingly enough, the Los Angeles Lakers, despite having just the 10th best odds to win the first overall pick, actually get the first overall pick. Remember, this is the team with LeBron on it, so they're going to pair the number one overall pick with LeBron, D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randle, and others. That is going to be a filthy team in a couple years, I would suspect. But we will see. So we've got to uh, work on. I uh, know I'm not going to fire Ray Allen there, but we've got to work on uh, hiring a coaching staff here. So we need a new assistant, a new head scout, and a new CFO. So uh, you're going to see we get Logan Schmidt, and uh, we're going to end up getting Thomas there our, to be our CFO. So we signed both of those guys. Actually, we don't get Schmidt. We get uh, another guy, Johnson, I believe, to be our head scout. And then we don't even get an assistant coach. I don't understand why the game, like, ended off that portion without letting us hire an assistant coach but whatever um so now we've got the draft combine and in the draft i knew we had a late first round pick we do have the celtics pick from this year because of a pick swap so we're picking 22nd in the first round so i thought i could try and target maybe a shooter in the late first round uh maybe like a wing a guy who could maybe be a rotation player for us i wasn't really expecting too much but um i was targeting a couple guys here malik monk i was looking at he's projected to go a little bit earlier than we have a pick for so if we wanted him we'd have to trade up um um, and then you're going to see I'm going to end up uh, inviting a bunch of guys to pre-draft workouts. All these guys are within like the 10 to 20 range in the draft. That's kind of what, what I was looking or where I was looking to try and find a player in this. Um, and you can see here's Malik Monk. I was targeting a couple other guys though as well. Jonathan Isaac is a six foot ten small forward who can kind of shoot the ball a little bit. Grayson Allen a little bit. Antonio Blakenly. Here's Isaac, the guy from I think he went to Florida State in this draft class. And uh, yes, he did six foot ten. He's projected to go 14th according to one of the uh, pre-draft ranking sites or whatever. And then Antonio Blakenly is another shooter. This guy out of LSU, six foot four, a shooting guard who can handle the ball a little bit, kind of more of a combo guard. But um, yeah, so you can kind of get an idea for the type of player that I was targeting. And then I also took a look at Don Maker here. He is, uh, of course, a man who many of you have probably seen his mixtape on in, in uh, high school. The big seven foot one uh, power forward who's got a really high ceiling, I would think. Uh, so if we were able to get him, he'd definitely be more of a project type of player than a guy who would help us out immediately in year one. But here we go. We're ready to kick off the draft. Draft 17, July 9th. Adam Silver ready to announce the first pick with the LA Lakers. And we will see who they're going to get. Uh, in all likelihood, it will be Harry Giles, the man who will be attending Duke next season. In real life, he tore his ACL recently. But uh, let's see who the Lakers go with. And it will be Harry Giles. So he averaged 29 and 13 in college he comes into the league as an 82 overall so the Lakers are getting a piece that's going to help them out immediately and that team is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the near future they're going to be a very scary bunch with LeBron James and all those young guys that they have so all right and the number two pick is going to go to the Washington Wizards and they are going to pick Jason Tatum out of Duke so Giles is college teammate now Tatum would actually end up getting traded to Orlando later in this draft I'll show that when that happens but all right so I'm looking at trading a point guard here because I know we have a depth of point guards especially after picking up Dennis Schroeder Clarkson seemed like the odd man out and I get an offer here for the 13th pick from Phoenix so I simplified a little bit I'm giving up Clarkson and just that 22nd pick we're going to try and get the 13th pick and we're also going to try and pick up a second rounder out of it and we do so we are going to trade up to number 13 in the draft that is a little bit more where we wanted to pick uh, based on some of the guys that we were targeting in the pre-draft workouts and stuff like that and then there you go Washington trades Jason Tatum for the eighth pick in a future second and they get Thon Maker with the eighth pick so I thought that was an interesting pick there Markel Fultz goes number 10 and then Malik Monk goes number 11 so he is off the board and then I uh, Jonathan Isaac the man who I really thought I would have taken if he had fallen to 13 he would have been really nice to use in some small ball lineups I thought but we didn't uh we didn't really have anyone here who i who i targeted in the pre-draft workout so i thought it was worth the 13th pick so i was sort of shopping the pick around a little bit i thought i saw an interesting one for chris uh, middleton there so we'll have to keep it or, or we'll have to remember that name we'll see if we can uh maybe look at a different deal in the near future for him but lonzo ball was pretty much the best prospect left at this point and he was projected to go in the top 10 by all three of the uh you know draft ranking outlets so i decided that would just go with him he was definitely the best available player even though we don't necessarily need a point guard he is six foot five could probably play some two for us if we needed to so we're going to trade back into the first round here evan fournier thomas robinson and a second round pick for the 20th pick in the draft and boris dia so we flip robinson for dia there and then we throw in a second and we trade back into the first round so i was looking at either antonio blakenly or grayson allen with this pick i kind of wanted to replace evan fournier uh with this pick and i end up going with grayson allen the shooter from duke so hopefully he will be able to provide some scoring from the wing for us and then we had one uh, actually we have two more 
picks in this draft. One is the 43rd pick. We're going to go with Quincy Shelton, the big 7'1 big man from Ball State. And then we end up trading our final second round pick along with Boris Dia for Mike Scott from the Houston Rockets. So I like that. I thought Mike Scott... A little bit younger, probably a better contract than Dio, and uh, even though I might have overpaid a little bit, I probably could have gotten Scott for Dio straight up still. Uh, I didn't really see anyone I wanted to pick with that pick anyway, so. Anyway, uh, we signed all three of our rookies to contracts, then we are on to uh, team player options. We're going to pick up Chris McCullough's option. He's the man who I think is going to uh, take some of Robinson's minutes. That's one of the reasons why I felt pretty uh, pretty fine giving up Thomas Robinson, because I think McCullough is going to step up and, and be in our rotation a little bit more this year. But you can see Chris Paul and Blake Griffin both opt out so they're both going to be free agents but by the time we actually get to free agency chris paul re-signed with the clippers on a four-year 122 million dollar deal so he re-signs with the max but blake griffin is going to get the free agency and we will see that in just a moment as you're going to see there he is blake griffin the number one free agent 28 years old 88 overall dwight howard greg monroe rudy gay zach randolph nerland done well some other notables on that list so I wanted to look at Blake Griffin, even though we already have two pretty good big men. I thought, well, if I could get Blake, I'd rather have him than Derek Favors. I could always trade Favors, but he was out of our price range. We didn't quite have max cap space, so I moved out of New Orleans. Noel, same sort of thing. Noel's actually the guy I wanted all along to get uh, before Favors. Uh, he's the guy I thought would be perfect with Brooke Lopez. So I was targeting him. I thought if I could get Noel, I could trade Favors and improve my roster in that way. It's really all just about managing assets. Uh, much like the Lonzo Ball pick, I was just really trying to accumulate assets uh, this offseason. And you're going to see uh, Nerlens Noel actually signs with the Lakers, so that team gets even more stacked. Their big men are now Harry Giles, Julius Randle, and Nerlens Noel. That is really absurd. So after striking out on the big name free agents, I decided to move on to the trade market. Two guys in particular I was targeting. One was Chris Middleton, the man that was offered to us at the draft. I know we already have a couple good wings like Terrence Ross and Harrison Barnes, but Middleton is definitely better than both of them, and he is just a light-out shooter. And he does make $14.5 million a year, but it's a two-year contract, and the, both these guys that I'm going to be targeting uh, both have two-year contracts. Contracts, they're very similar contracts and it sort of works with our salary structure because we're still going to have max cap space next summer anyway uh Derek Favors and Brooke Lopez are both going to be free agents so it sort of works out that we're going to have money coming off the books each year but we're going to give up Marcus Smart and I believe what is this a two second round picks and we're going to get Chris Middleton and then the other guy we're targeting is Eric Bledsoe and I'm going to be looking to move Schroeder in this deal to try and uh, upgrade at point guard a lot of you guys mentioned Bledsoe would have been a better target for me than Schroeder at the deadline last year and so I decided to go through with that I kind of agreed I thought Bledsoe probably would have been a better target in hindsight so we're going to give up a lot though it's going to be schroeder terrence ross and a future first it's the warriors first round pick that we own this year for uh eric bledsoe but we still own two first round picks in the next uh coming draft so i'm not too worried about giving up that pick plus the warriors i think were ranked number one with the preseason power ranking so i imagine that would have been a late first round pick anyway but all right that is the team so like i said bledsoe and middleton both on pretty high salary to your contracts um so it sort of works out like i said we're gonna have lots of money coming off the books in the next two years and we don't really have a defined core yet. I mean, that is for sure, I would say. We're really just trying to field a competitive team. And then I think the strategy is going to be once we find a free agent to sign and sort of build around that, that's when we can start, you know, thinking about long-term pieces for now. I think the roster we have right now fits together pretty well. Middleton, Bledsoe. Uh, we'll probably start Barnes at the small forward and then go with Favors and Lopez. I think that's a pretty good starting five. A lot of different skill sets there. Things that can complement each other uh, pretty nicely, I think. But... Like I said, nothing is really set in stone. So let me know what you guys thought of the offseason. And uh, that is pretty much going to do it. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching. And I'm out. Peace.